USA with two individual matchups in their favor. But the total pin advantage, 105, the biggest it's been all day long for the world team. Really, the only chance they have is if Team USA strikes out in the 10th frame and just about every one of the world players opens in the 10th. Yeah, Michael, he's doing his part. He's in the 240s. That's what your leadoff bowler is supposed to do for the team. Let's see if his uh, his teammates can follow suit. One more, and then it's up to Kimo Lehtinen. <laughs> Nicely done, Michael. Good game. Now the. Team USA will sit back and hope that Kimo doesn't strike on the first ball in the 10th frame. Mm. This is exactly what we're talking about. Strike out in the 10th frame, put a little pressure on your opponent. Kimo goes right through the nose, leaves the 2-7. Now he's got to convert the baby split to avoid an open frame. Kimo already with three open frames today, Randy. Make it four. One point for USC. Overall lead down to 74. So what was once a 105 pin lead now shaved down to 74, a 31 pin positive swing. Here's Ronnie Russell. Oh, man. Good shot there. Only to leave a ring in 10 and just three strikes today for Russell. None of them have been paired together. Russell for the spare conversion. And he'll get one more attempt. It's a real rally killer right there. Good shot thrown, ring and 10, can't double up. Now he has to sit back and hope Dan McClellan opens in the 10th frame so that the USA can continue to, to gain ground on Team World. Sure, of course, always on the fill shot. So we go Canadian now. Dan McClellan, a student right now at Saginaw Valley State, was the collegiate player of the year there in the 07 08 season and a member of the junior Team Canada side for a couple of years and mm. can't get the 10 to drop. So if Dan spare here, spares here and then strikes, nothing gained, nothing lost. In the total pins, but in the total pins, Dan is still going to defeat Ronnie Russell. So he will earn the world team one point. So it's 1-1, one, one. USA with one individual victory, and Team World with another, but some of these other head-to-head -head matchups heavily skewed in favor of the world side. The U.S. is only ahead in one other match. They're looking at total points right now, Rob, which is a three-point swing. Five pins picked up right there. Nickel and dime your way. Pretty soon you have a dollar. Again, after nine frames, the world team led by 105 total pins. That has since been shaved to 69. The arrows highlighting matches, individual matches that have already been won. So one point for Team USA with the Haugen victory. McClellan's victory ties it up at one all. Here is Wes Malott. 
taking on Jason Belmonte. Belmo has had the Big Nasties number all day long. Now, way to drop all 10 their way. It's been a tough run for Wes. He has danced with that gutter most of the afternoon. Well, Wes can still shoot 216 if he strikes out. And that's the, I mean, that's the key to try to get back into this. You gotta just pick at it. But Wes needs to, to double up here and then hopes, hope that Belmo doesn't throw a six pack. Belmo was working on a five bagger bowling, a huge game. To be Malat's sixth strike, if he can get them all to drop, and he does. So there's a double in the tenth. I mean, that's big. Now, if Belmo doesn't strike, hey, the Team USA is going to pick up more pins. If he splits, even better. Nasty. It's okay. So Malat's day done. Belmo on the tough left lane. He's been sitting for a while. Let's see if he can uh, make the shot he needs to make. He's really been the strength of the world team today. Opened up with a two-bagger, went spare, spare, and since then, nothing but strikes for the two-handed bowler from Australia. And with that strike there, this match between Jason Belmonte and Wes Malott is Thanks. over. Thanks. This and was a good game. So I a good game. Any hopes that the USA might have of winning this tournament? I mean, it's basically all but mathematically over. Team World with two wins already. Here's Sean Rash. The 10 pin. Been a tough, tough outing for Sean. <laughs> Get a chance to redeem himself next week at the what area code World Championships where he is the number two seed. And he's been working hard to get back to his winning ways. Well, it takes time. You know, it takes the time. It goes back to the, the routine of what I was doing years ago when I was really successful. Um, last summer, I had a chance to go back to school at Wichita State and work with Coach Lewis and Coach Vatican about a, a few mental things and then even... I remember the week before Columbus last year, I actually worked with, with Lewis and said, hey, I need to do some video of what's going on because things were just awful. And uh, we, we brought up when I won the Masters and won Baltimore and there was just some slight tweaks in my footing and a few things with my arm swing and you know the mentality of giving myself a chance and grinding through it, remembering that if you shoot 160, someone else is probably going to too and you can't control the pass and you need to move forward and just trying to stay as positive as, you know, as possible. Better days may be ahead, though, for Rash, the newly engaged young man, your number two seed for next week's first major of the season. Should he win, he'll take on Bill O'Neill for the title at the PBA World Championship. Here's Osku in the tent. <laughs> so, Osku Palermo, the finished two-handed bowler, earns another point for the world side. Bit of a gunslinger there, huh? That's fast and whippy. Chris Barnes up next as he takes on Mika Koivu Niemi. Barnes with the chance, though, to win one for Team USA. And here is Barnes in the 10. So a pair there. Personal pride on the line for Chris Barnes taking on roommate Mika Koivuniemi. Chris can still strike out to shoot 227. The best Mika can shoot 225. Still need one more. Yeah. Messenger! Yeah! Down she goes! Go get him, boy! That's it's not over yet. That, that's the only way. Yeah. That's the only way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mika's giving it right back to him. That's the only way you can beat here. me. God, where was this all game? Come on. Uh, okay. Uh, nine. Only nine. Winner, winner. Another one. 
chicken dinner. Triple X in the tent. Chris Barnes, your country is proud See of you. you. Next week. <laughs> Does that mean Finland is not proud of Mika? Oh no, Finland will always be proud of Mika, sir. Yeah. Mika understands, and so does Finland, that Chris Barnes got lucky to beat him. Chris's victory, just the second individual victory today for Team USA. They're looking for a third. Bill O'Neill is going to have to have a late flurry, and M. Leto is going to have to do a little choke job here in the 10th. That's a good start to a late rally, O'Neill. Give me a strike there in his first effort in the tent. Beautiful shot there. That's 10 in the pit. Watch all 10 get sucked right off the deck. Right on the second arrow, out to about the third board. Right now, Bill O'Neill looking for a little personal glory. Trying to steal one away from Monticello. Another strike for the guy who is your number one seed for next weekend's PBA World Championship. There's an old saying in bowling, Rob, hit him thin and watch him spin. It's that little light mixture shot there. I've heard that phrase from you a few times, my friend. His final effort of the day in the 10th, three in a row. So that's a 2-0-1 for O'Neill in the books. And little Monticelli just needs good count and a mark. Never get tired of watching this guy throw it. Oh, what a classy individual he is. 49 years of age, and the only way you would know it would be by the gray in his hair. And this just got interesting. Well, I can't remember the last time I saw the 467 picked up on television. Ever. And Leto cuts you right through it. the heart with that shot there. O'Neill strikes out in the 10th frame. Looks like he's going to steal a point away. He does. So Monicelli. With a 193, O'Neill wins that matchup, but the world team takes the overall title, defeating the USA 6-3. Team USA had their last total pin advantage in the fourth frame when they were on top by 16, and then it just went downhill fast. They had a 24-pin swing by the end of the fifth. Team World was up eight, and they never looked back. At one point, 105 advantage after nine frames, and they conclude with a 43 total pin victory, winning it overall 6-3 to three over Team USA. The PBA USA versus the World Championship is brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds by the USBC and its 2 million members. To find out more about USBC, log on to bowl.com today. By Brunswick. Find your next ball at bowlwithbrunswick.com. And by Atonic. Visit www.atonic.com slash bowl. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, welcoming you back to Las Vegas. Time now for our championship recap brought to you by Geico. Randy, we're not looking for a scapegoat, but I think we found one for Team USA. Well, Sean got off to a pretty good start marking in the first five frames, but after that, it's been nothing but downhill. He opened in the sixth, opened in the seventh, flags that seven pin in the eighth, and opened again in the ninth frame. While Oscu Palermo, well, he pretty much had a cakewalk in their match and just showed you he can not only strike with two hands, but also with one. Eight of the 12 bowlers today will be seen live next week. Our three days worth of coverage at the PBA World Championship. Your number one seed, Bill O'Neill. He may be the best in the world right now. I don't know. I think when people say that I'm, I'm the best in the world, I think it kind of, I, I don't really think so at the moment. I mean, I, I have a lot of confidence, and I think that, that you know, I'm probably a top five, top ten player, but um, there's, you know, there's still flaws in my game that I think I need to, to fix before I, before I can get to that, that spot. I'm extremely hard on myself, but I think that's what, that's what drives people. And I think if you look at guys like Chris Barnes and Walter Ray, they're, they're extremely hard on themselves as well. And they, they expect to win every time they step on the lanes, and, and I do as well. Friday, our coverage begins live, 5 Eastern. Saturday, 9 Eastern. And then Sunday, the finals at 1 Eastern on ESPN of the first major of the year. Bill O'Neill will be your number one seed, and you will see him live 
on Sunday. Team World taking down Team USA 6-3 for Kimberly, Randy, and our entire crew. I'm Rob Stone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.